After winning round eight, Beelzebub is walking up the stairs as he's quoting saying that there's not much difference between humans and gods because of the battle that he has with Nikola Tesla. As all the gods are celebrating for Beelzebub and his victory against the humanity and actually giving the gods an actual point where the score is four to four and now it's tied between the gods and humanities. Gods like Zeus, Hermes, and Ares are surprised of the ability of what Nikola Tesla was able to do because they believe that if Nikola Tesla was able to successfully able enough to execute his last attack, then the score will be different and it will be three to five. And at this point, the gods will be definitely be in trouble at this moment because the gods will have to do a huge comeback to actually beat humanity. They actually compliment Tesla and his ability and actually admire that last attack that he was able to pull, but they also admire that Beelzebub, since he is very powerful as well, he was able to stop that attack and that they also admire him as well. And it could have been all over if Tesla actually was able to execute his actual last attack. But then we see that Beelzebub, he's actually walking in a hallway where his whole body is bloody. And then we focus on humanity as they're still encouraging that they will win the record of Ragnarok and they're not losing hope at all. And that they're actually more encouraged of the battle of what's next to come after the loss of Tesla. So then we focus on Rehilda and she's walking into this room where we see all of the fallen comrades or people who participated in the actual record of Ragnarok, where we see Lobo as joy, we see Adam as love, we see Poseidon as pride, we see Hercules as justice, we see Raiden as pretty much passion, we see Zero as innocent, and we see Hades as dignity, and then we see Tesla as advanced. And then she quote that these are truly wonderful fighters. And then we see Buddha. Buddha actually healed from all his battle wounds in his last round of Record of Ragnarok. And he came there to actually talk and have a conversation with Brihilda. But Brihilda wants to scold Buddha because of the fact that he was not there in his hospital room. And then now he's sleeping in this private room. But then Buddha asks Brihilda like, hey, what happened to your ex-boyfriend Sigfield? But then she explained to him like, hey, he is my boyfriend. And she goes on ahead and dip because she was just like, look, I have another round to prepare for. And as of this moment, Buddha's is shocked because the fact that they're still in relationship. But the one question is, who's going to be participating in round nine? Because now she's saying that I'm preparing for the next round, which she has no indication that Buddha is trying to free Sigfield because we see him talking to Taioki in chapter 65. And what they're discussing, he was just like, hey, I have someone that will shake up Ragnarok. And he said it was Sigfield, the dragon slayer. So then we change into the next scene where it's the underworld. And then we go and focus on Tartarus where we see the 72 demons of Solomon are actually guarding all of these demons and all of these people who are like dangerous in the underworld as two of the guards are actually are looking and watching the last round of record of Ragnarok as they admired that Beelzebub was able to win. While they're walking, they're walking towards the end of the hallway where they're seeing this cage person and this cage person is revealed to be Siegfried as he is just being all chained up and we actually learn that he is a demigod he's half god half human and it seems as if that he's been in prison based on the gods it seems like the gods actually put him on prison because he literally says in a quote to stating that hey don't push yourself too hard helda which means Brihilda, so which means that, you know, he actually know that the record of Ragnarok is actually happening and he's supporting his girlfriend. So it kind of indicates that the gods are probably the ones who put him in there and they probably don't want him to participate in record of Ragnarok or there's something that happened. And we kind of see like all scars and everything else. And it's just to the point where it extremes. But 
other than that, we see the face revealed of Siegfried, the Dragon Slayer, and this is going to be very, very interesting so far. So now we have to figure out why Siegfried's in jail. We also got to figure out who's going to be participating in round nine, and we got to figure out like how is Buddha's going to try to free actually Siegfried because I think he's going to send Tai Tioki to go on ahead and free him and like literally kill all of the 72 demons of Solomon. Um, I think that's probably what's going to happen. But let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this chapter and what you guys think was going to happen later on in the next round. Let me know in your prediction who you think was going to be fighting in round nine. Um, and, but if you guys do like the video, please give it a like, subscribe, and remember, always be decent. It's the Monotone Man, and hope you guys have a wonderful day and be safe out here. Peace.